Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, once again, apologies for the sound of the fan in the background. Once again, it was very, very hot today. Not that I'm complaining. It's nice to have nice weather on bank holiday weekend for a change. Anyway, so we're going to start things off now with a report regarding a Windows 10 bug. And unfortunately, this is another vaguely hilarious case of Windows, Microsoft, should I say, sorry, releasing an update to resolve problems that were found in a previous update. In this case, they released the KB4 505903 update back in July to resolve audio problems that were actually found with the Windows 10 May 19th update. Today, there has been a report from Tech Power Up basically saying that, well, that mouthful of an update hasn't actually fixed the issue and has left some users with a playback issue. So, for those of you who haven't experienced the issue, what is it, I hear you ask? Well, according to Tech Power Up's article, which you will find linked in the description below this video, they describe it as, quote, audio stuttering and glitching and lots of it. Think Winamp circa 1999 running on a Pentium 133 with a CPU priority toggle set to low and the CPU being subject to the rigors of Internet Explorer rendering Yahoo.com over a 56k PCI soft modem really paints a picture of the issue, I feel. But the long and short of that is really annoying, nasty audio stuttering. For those of you wondering what the cause of all this is, well, basically it's a change that when, uh, Microsoft made sorry, to the deferred procedure call or DPC tick rate back in that May 2019 update. And these changes brought with it some spikes in DPC latency, which according to Tech Power Up's reports leads to the audio stuttering and glitching issues. And this is in any system that does not support dynamic DPC or a sound card that doesn't support DPC, should I say. There is a bit of a silver lining, however, as long as you don't have a discrete sound card. Because, well, according to Tech Power Up, the issue is currently restricted to devices with discrete sound cards due to the fact that most devices and the updates released by Microsoft rely on Realtek Audio Codex. That does seem to resolve the issue for a lot of people, but if you do have a discrete a sound card, unfortunately for the moment, this issue remains unresolved. Hopefully Microsoft figure out the cause for this issue, because to be honest, I don't know a lot of people who still have a discrete sound card, but I'm sure they're out there for whatever, you know, for whatever reason. I'm sure there are many, many valid ones to have one. But regardless, I'm sure Microsoft will issue an update to permanently solve this issue as best as they can. Because it's not brilliant that this is happening, even if it is in a smaller number of cases than the entire user base of Windows 10. So, we're going to move on to our next topic now, which is actually regarding Global Foundries. So, essentially, Global Foundries is suing TSMC for violation of patents. And it's not just TSMC, it's them, Apple, Qualcomm, Broadcom, NVIDIA, and other companies who Global Foundries are accusing of violating its patents. The primary target is TSMC, however, and according to them, they have violated no less than 16 patents. You might wonder why these other companies are falling foul of Global Foundries. It is due to the fact that they make use of TSMC's products, so they would arguably be using these things which have infringed upon the patents, allegedly. So we have several patents here which cover a lot of areas. So we have the, I'm just going to go with the names rather than the patent numbers because I'll be here till number reciting these mouthfuls, but we've got bit cell with double patented male layer structures, semiconductor device with transistor local interconnects, and that's listed twice. And then we have introduction of metal impurity to change work function of conductive electrodes and semiconductor device having contact layer providing electrical connections and their method of forming a metal or metal nitride interface layer between silicon nitride and copper and then we have a bunch more as well structures of the methods and tools for forming in situ metallic dielectric caps for interconnects introduction of metal impurity to change work function of conductive electrodes methods of forming FinFET devices with a shared gate structure semiconductor device with stressed fin sections multiple dielectric FinFET structure and method and we've got the bit cell one again, complementary metal oxide semiconductor or CMOS device having gate structures connected by a metal gate conductor and hybrid con contacts, excuse me, structure with low aspect ratio contacts in a semiconductor device and complementary transistors compromising high K metal gate electrode structures and exponentially, actually sorry, excuse me, form semiconductor materials in the drain and source areas. So 
Long story short, these patents cover a lot of ground and Global Foundries is claiming that several of TSMC's process nodes violate these patents. And these are the 7NM, 10NM, 12NM, 16NM and 28NM process nodes. The bulk of these claims are going to be filed in the District Course of West Texas. So the company has issued a statement, or well, a fellow by the name of Greg Barlett, who is the Senior VP of Engineering and Technology at Global Foundries, has issued a statement, and he says, quote, while semiconducting manufacturing has continued to shift to Asia, GF has bucked the trend by investing heavily in the American and European semiconductor industries, spending more than $15 billion in the last decade in the US, and more than $6 billion in Europe's largest semiconductor manufacturing fabrication facility. These lawsuits are aimed at protecting those investments and the US and European-based innovation that powers them. For years, while we have been devoting billions of dollars to domestic research and development, of TSMC has been unlawfully reaping the benefits of our investment. This action is critical to halt Taiwan's semiconductor's unlawful use of our vital assets and to safeguard the American and European manufacturing base. So given that this has such a widespread and is targeted towards so many companies, this is not going to be an overnight thing by any means for us to see any real decisions being made um, in the court. These things are always slow moving no matter what, but I think the, com the sort of complex nature of this is going to slow down even more than it normally would be. But obviously this potentially could have huge ramifications, even if one of these patents is found to have been infringed by one of the companies or TSMC or whoever, you know, you know just speculating here, that could have some pretty widespread um, effects on the industry. So it's definitely going to be one to watch, but unfortunately it is going to be quite some time before we see anything come out of this either way. Still, yikes, uh, potentially industry shaking stuff here. So we're going to finish up today's proceedings with a little something from Valve and Steam, of course. As I'm sure some of you are aware, basically Valve have a scheme for Steam where they pay white hat hackers for discovering security flaws in the Steam platform. And now this scheme has been expanded after Valve mistakenly dismissed a valid vulnerability which was reported by a researcher by the name of Vasily Kravet and he basically reported a Steam vulnerability and they were dismissed because they were outside of the scope or believed to be they were believed to be outside of the scope should I say and basically he was told that the security team would no longer receive his reports through the bounty program and not keen to be deterred by this he made a second security flaw public and Valve has patched both the vulnerabilities that he discovered and also threw up their hands and admitted yeah sorry guys we done messed up and they made a bit of a statement to Ars Technica and you will find their article linked in the description below this video and they said quote we are aware that the researcher who discovered the bugs was incorrectly turned away through our hacker one bounty program where his report was classified as out of scope this was a mistake. Our HackerOne program rules were intended only to exclude reports of Steam being instructed to launch previously installed malware on a user's machine as that local user. Instead, misinterpretation of the rules also led to the exclusion of a more serious attack that also performed local privilege escalation through Steam. We have updated our HackerOne program rules to explicitly state that these issues are in scope and should be reported. Unfortunately, no real comments were made on what's happening happening, excuse me, to Vasily after he was incorrectly dismissed, but they did say they were quote reviewing the details of each situation to determine the appropriate action. So yes, they have apologized. Yes, he's most likely they're not most likely not going to be dismissing his reports out of hand like they said they would, just because well he was right and they have patched both the vulnerabilities. I would very much hope that that's what they're going to do, but they haven't really commented one way or the other. So obviously this platform uh, this uh, this scheme, excuse me, words are hard, it's way too hot today, sorry guys. This scheme is obviously something that Valve definitely need to do. Obviously it's great that they've finally wised up and patched the issues, but obviously they, they're human beings at the end of the day, they're going to drop the ball. So obviously pleased to see that they have actually patched out the issues, just hope that we don't see um, more like this happen in the future. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the person who discovered this is not going to get penalised for Valve's mistake. I would think not, but... We don't know. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.